Hello guys, and welcome back to the podcast. I'm excited to share this episode with you guys today because I go really, really deep with a current client of mine. Mimi Watt is the dating and relationship coach who is breaking all of the molds. She helps people to become secure within themselves, attract healthy love through healing their anxious attachment styles. But the reason that I'm really interviewing Mimi today is because she is a relationship coach that is really breaking a lot of the rules when it comes to relationship coaching, she is showing what is possible for people in that non-tangible ROI space in business. She is a current client of mine inside of the House Mastermind, and she is currently experiencing huge success. She soared from around 1,200 followers to almost 80,000 followers on Instagram. She's had her highest cash month of over $15,000, including a $10,000 day. She's signing high-ticket painful clients, and she's recently left her full-time and part-time jobs to go all in on her business and she's moved to Bali, which is so, so, so exciting because this is something that she really wanted to do. But this journey isn't as straightforward as it may seem. It may look like a quantum leap on the surface, but there's a lot more that goes into this journey. Just eight months ago, life looked very, very different for Mimi. And in this episode, we really go into what went on underneath the surface to create space for this kind of quantum leap. What did she shift? What did she do? What changed? And we really go into some of those things as the burning questions that I know a lot of other people who are aspiring to have this kind of level of jump and growth and success want to know as well. So we're going to go into all of it. We are leaving no stone unturned. And one thing that I really do want to acknowledge about Mimi is her level of commitment that I 100% attribute to the results that she had. When she joined the house, she comes to every single call. She has been food poisoned on a call. She just always shows up and she's always asking for feedback. She's asking questions. And that is one of the things that allows her to learn so quickly. And it's part of the reason that she gets these results is because she's not half asking it. She has showed up to the container. She is getting what she can from it. And she is learning and evolving and taking action. And that is the thing that really can create really big results is when people show up and like fully tune into the container. So really take that and bear that in mind as you're going through this. But to come back to Mimi, um, she uses her peacefully attached framework to get incredible results for her clients. If you don't know her already, you can go and find her on Instagram at Mimi Watt. She has a huge amount of experience, which starts from her own experience with going from anxious to secure in her own dating and relationship life. And she now helps dozens of her clients do the same thing. So she takes clients through this framework an eight-week group program called Feastfully Attached and it's actually launching very soon so we will leave all of the details below under this episode so you guys can check it out. I hope that you guys enjoy the episode let's get into it. Hello everyone welcome back to the podcast today I am going to be doing something that I haven't done in a while and I'm bringing on a very dear friend but also client Mimi. Mimi has been working with me for coming up to about six months now and her story is amazing and has so many things that people need to hear when they are in the throes of building businesses because there's a lot of things that you can intellectualize and hear but to actually experience really allows it to like integrate and for you to fully understand so i think many of you are going to be able to relate to mimi's story and her transformation story as well and yeah we're going to go into it so welcome to the podcast mimi Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited too. Okay, so take a moment to introduce yourself. Tell us what you do um, and the kind of people that you serve. Yes, so uh, my name is Mimi Watt and I am a dating and relationship coach. And I work with people who have an anxious attachment style who want to heal their anxious attachment style so that they can become secure within themselves independently, but also so that they can attract healthy, secure relationships with a partner. I love it. And this has become more and more specific over time that you've really come into this space. But I'm really curious to know, like, what got you into coaching in the dating and relationship space? Mm. So, um, yeah, I started my coaching journey back in 2020, I think is when it started. And, um, I started as a life coach and then sort of long story short, I, um, I started the relationship coaching, I think about 12 months ago now when I was trying to, we'll get into the story more, but I had taken a break from my business and then I was coming back into it and I was trying to figure out which direction I wanted to take it in and who I wanted to serve. And, um, 
a good friend of mine sort of asked me, you know, she said, what do you, what are you naturally really good at? What do your close friends and family always uh, compliment you on or say you're good at? And it kind of, I realized it was around dating and relationships, around communication, around security in relationships and um, overcoming having an anxious attachment style because that has been one of the biggest journeys I've gone through in my life as an adult was um, struggling with toxic, unhealthy relationships for years and years, like from I w- when I was probably 17, you know, so for over 10 years and then realizing where that was stemming from and why that kept happening to, to have that realization and do the work to heal my anxious attachment style quite literally changed my life. And um, I think it's such an important journey to go on because relationships are, you know, one of the cornerstones of life. It's, they're so important. Um, And so when I had that realization, I said, okay, I'm just going to give this a go and see how, see how it feels. Um, So I did. And it felt so right. (laughs) It was, um, you know, it was the first time I had experienced what it feels like to be truly embodied in what I'm teaching and what I'm talking about. And um, yeah, that's kind of how I got into the relationship space. Mm. It's such a good way to get into something when it, it sounds like you followed the passion and I, I'm kind of trying to avoid saying follow the passion instead following your curiosity, following the thing that makes you curious. And it sounds like that's because something you were healing through became an area that you were very passionate about. And as someone that also used to have a severely anxious attachment type, I can also speak to the power of doing this. But I'm curious, you, you spoke about, you know, you used to loop through um, toxic relationships. Can you explain a little bit more specifically how that used to impact you and what actually healing your own anxious attachment style looks like? Yeah, definitely. So it basically looked like when I would get into a relationship, because I was so anxious, I was constantly attracting uh, people with an avoidant attachment style. So people who are more emotionally unavailable, who find intimacy and closeness with the partner quite suffocating. And this pattern of, you know, once you start to go grow closer in your intimacy and connection, the avoidant partner would begin to pull away. And Mm. this is this classic cycle. So because I was anxious, the more I would lean in, the more my partner would pull away. And this completely consumed my life. So anytime I was in a relationship, I felt so out of control, so anxious, so ungrounded that my whole life became about trying to control the relationship trying to mm. control my partner and to get them to do what I needed and they just couldn't or wouldn't and so it was really awful it was like a const- constantly suffering my social life always fell away um you know relationship with family also was impacted because I think you know when you're in a toxic relationship there's always a part of you that knows it's not right and knows they're not they're not good for you um but the attachment that you have is so strong that you'd rather persevere and continue staying in that relationship than acknowledge the truth. And because of that, you know, I would shy away from speaking to my family about it because your family will always tell you the harsh truth you don't want to hear. And um, yeah, and I, you know, and it always, it, you know, it, it went to me suffering, um, like I had severe hormonal acne in one relationship from all of the stress in another one, I kept getting, I kept getting sick. And so, yeah, just the stress it puts on your body and on your mind, um, is very strong. And so that's, yeah, that's what I was going through. And then when I discovered attachment styles, it was after a pretty significant breakup in 2020. And I just reached this point where I said to myself, I can't do this anymore. Like I cannot go through another relationship like this and I need to figure out why this keeps happening because amongst all of these relationships, I am the common denominator. So there's got to be something here. And it's funny because my older sister had been trying to get me to read this book called Attached, which is, you know, one of the best, most um, best known books around attachment styles. She'd been trying to get me to read it for years and I just kept refusing because I think I wasn't ready 
you know, I wasn't ready to face the truth. And then after this breakup, I was finally ready. And so I got this book and Haley, I inhaled this book. Like I <laughs> couldn't, I couldn't read it fast enough because it was, it finally, everything made sense. And I understood mm. why I was the way I was in relationships, why I kept attracting the same person with a different face. Um, and more importantly, I saw the light at the end of the tunnel. I, I learned that there is a way to fix this. There's a way to heal and change the course of future relationships. So I went down that journey. I started learning everything I could. I invested in coaches to help me. I did programs and, um, yeah. And that's when the journey began back in the end of 2020 or beginning of 2021. And I can confidently say now that I am securely attached and, Yay. um, yeah, and have changed, yeah, the types of relationships that I attract into my life since then. Yeah, it's so interesting how when a student is ready, the teacher appears in whatever <laughs> format. And it, it just happens kind of again and again and again. But I find this topic so interesting because it's it's something that from like a logical perspective doesn't make that much sense. You know, a lot of people that haven't heard about like attachment styles, like you know, your, how your own experience can then attract in someone. It almost feels like made up. It almost feels like magic, you know? And I remember mm. when I first was reading about this, I was just like, can that really be the case? Like, could I, can I actually be attracting in these kinds of partners? And, you know, short answer is yes. But can you explain like a little bit around what actually from childhood perspective can create like an anxious attachment type versus an avoidant attachment type? Because, you know, it, it, there seems to be some kind of like magnetic pull between these two things. Mm. You know, I'm the anxious attachment side, my partner was the avoidant and we both kind of come to secure together. But like, is it always these two dynamics? Like what happens in childhood for us to like come together like this? Yeah, it's such a good question. And, you know, I get what you mean, how it always does seem fake. Cause like, how is this there, uh, this invisible magnetic pull? Yeah. But yeah. So what happens is for someone who has an anxious attachment style, typically in childhood, uh, you would have had, would have experienced some sort of inconsistency from your parent, parents or caregiver in their emotional or and or physical availability to you. So often that looks like um, as a child, it, and it can, it's, there's such a wide range of things that can happen and it can be really small incidences or it can be big things. So for me personally, my parents went through a divorce when I was three years old. And so that separation of, you know, my parents, the family unit that was my main source of connection and belonging was very extremely unsettling. And, um, I didn't know sort of what was going on. I, I didn't always get the emotional validation and reassurance that I needed in the way I needed it as a child. It was quite a traumatic time. And, um, you know, my parents were doing the best they could and they were there for me, but, um, it's yeah, not having the validation and emotional reassurance that you need can really cause that anxious attachment style. Um, and, it can create this sense of feeling like you need to earn people's love. Like you need to, um, you can often develop people pleasing tendencies. So you need to be the good girl. You need to um, do everything your parents say because you're so desperate to make sure you don't lose that love and connection with them. Wow. And then someone who is, has an avoidant attachment style may have experienced um sort of in a similar way, like a very unstable upbringing with their parents. Um, maybe their parents were really uh, crossed a lot of their boundaries. There was no respect for boundaries. Um, they did things that developed a, or that broke trust with their child. And so the avoidant grows up sort of not feeling safe to get close to another person because they fear deep down that that trust is going to be broken um, or boundaries are going to be crossed. And so they end up feeling quite suffocated by that intimacy and they, they become very hyper independent. So they learned from a young age that they need, they can only rely on themselves. Mm. Um, and so what ends up happening is the anxious and the avoidant attract each other so much because they both prove each other's beliefs about love to be true. 
Mm, so the avoidance, because they are maybe hot and cold, they're inconsistent. Like one minute they're all close and lovey-dovey, the next minute they they pull away and don't respond to your messages for like two days and you're like, what the hell is going on? And even though consciously you don't like this behavior, subconsciously your your belief systems and your patterning tells you that oh we we recognize this behavior this is familiar this is what we grew up with so surely this must be love mm-hmm. and then the oh avoidant God. experiences you trying to get close because you're not getting what you need so you keep pushing and pushing and then they're like yep see you're getting too close this is all going to end like shit this is not good and so they push you away and and so it's this really toxic um yeah I guess like magnetism for all the wrong reasons but mm. that's kind of why it happens it's so interesting because I, I don't know whether it usually goes to this like extent, but when I was in my highly, highly anxious attachment type, I used to actually crave pain and mm. I had learned to associate love with pain so much because, you know, whether it was not getting like the um, consistent reassurance or love from like a caregiver in some aspect or, you know, early relationships that kind of like cemented that in. When I then got into like healthier relationships, I would then go searching for pain, you know, whether it was like, I would like before going to bed to soothe myself to sleep, I would like imagine my partner like cheating on me or something, or I'd be like, oh, just go and have a look at like an ex-girlfriend of theirs and like make myself feel like shit. And then I can soothe myself to sleep. It was so fucked up. And it obviously doesn't you know, it doesn't feel good. You end up like going into like anxious cycles, but I was so used to it that I just thought that was normal. And I thought that's what love was. So when someone treated me like shit, I thought that was exciting. And I'd like chase after, I'd be like, that's what love is. And when I found like these more secure, stable, I thought they were boring. I was like, this Mm -hmm. is boring. Like there's not any love. Like where's the love gone? Cause it's not exciting. I'm not feeling pain. And it was like this really unhealthy, kind of cycle that I got into over and over and over again do you find that people in those anxious attachment types or even avoidant do you feel like there is an association with pain that comes up often or is that just me being a widow oh no you are not alone in that boat um it's a very common struggle that that happens because you're Essentially, when you have this anxious or avoidant attachment style, your nervous system is so wired to be in that fight or flight state. So you're attracted, you're almost addicted to this pain cycle of being hurt, being pushed away, but then wanting to like earn back people's affection and wanting to prove yourself and prove your worth to people. So it's very, uh, very normal and very real. And I can relate to this. um, I guess a personal experience was my ex-partner um we were in a very healthy secure relationship and it was the first secure relationship I'd been in right like since healing my attachment style and we were a few months in and things were so calm and consistent and steady that I experienced the same thing I was like is this wait is this really what I've been wanting my whole life is this it you know, because it felt, it felt boring. Underwhelming. And yeah. Yeah. Underwhelming, anticlimactic. I was like, what yeah. is this? And then I found myself, luckily I caught myself wanting to create drama where there wasn't any Ooh, because yeah. I needed you know that, that one. of excitement. Like, and thankfully I had, you know, the foresight to go to my partner at the time and I was honest with him and I was like, I need to tell you something. I feel like I'm trying to create drama for no reason because I'm not used to this, you know, these calm waters in a relationship. Mm. And the funny thing is, is that he agreed and he said that he's feeling the same thing because he had been used to attracting emotionally unavailable women and me, men. And so we were both experiencing that and it actually brought us even closer because we ended up laughing about it. And then, you know, we had the opportunity to discuss, okay, like, well, we're both feeling this way, you know, can we, is there things we want to do to like spice things up in a healthy way? Or Mm. maybe we can remind each other that this is actually what we've both longed for, for such a long time. And can we really see that for how special it is and learn to appreciate it in a whole new way? So it is one mm. of the more unspoken about 
um, I would say struggles of becoming secure is, you know, people think that once you're securely attached, it's all easy breezy. And that is far from the truth. You know, like when I went into that relationship, there was a lot of healing that still needed to be done to almost like unwind my nervous system to come to this calm place. And it, it takes time, but you know, it definitely can be done. And, and that's what I support my clients through. Yeah. I love that. It literally took me and my partner like three years of like almost breaking up and hot and cold and on and off. So now find this really stable place. But it reminds me of this interview that Megan Fox did with Call Her Daddy. And um, she was talking about just this complete honesty about craving pain and just being like, why would I want a stable relationship? It's so boring. And she's you know, so she's so open about it. She's she's so aware of it, but she doesn't want to change it because she's just like, I don't want life to feel boring. And it's just, it was just so interesting to watch that play out and, you know, seeing their dynamic, it's so like, it's hot, cold. It's like so enthralled with like love and passion, but it's so, so unstable. And, you know, they're both very honest about how they feel about that. And if you've read like Megan Fox's book at all, where she talks about all of the things that like men have done to her in the past, some of those stories are about Colson, you know, and it's just so interesting that like you can be so entrenched in that way of thinking that you're like I actually I crave this so much that I don't want to change like what do you do in that situation oh man like I mean I guess good on her for owning it and being aware of it I think if that's her prerogative and that's the way she wants to live her life then more power to her you know um but yeah it's it's funny I, as you were saying that I was thinking about like, you know, this intensity where you're enthralled in this relationship and it's this push and pull and this whole dr- dramatic like dynamic. Um, I think so much, we are taught so much of this through Hollywood movies, like through so the true. media growing up. I, I was recently rewatching Sex and the City, like the, the show, not the movies. And on the <laughs> one hand... <laughs> On the one hand, I love that show. So, you know, I was like addicted. I loved watching it. But on the other hand, because it had oh been God, quite yeah. a few years since watching it, I was gobsmacked and a little bit mm. disgusted at the the relationship between Carrie Bradshaw and Big is mm, so, toxic so toxic and so anxious avoidant. It's not funny. And I was like, oh, my God, this is what we grow up seeing and believing and absorbing and thinking, you know, relationships should be that way. And if they're not, they're boring and it's not love. A hundred percent. It's the same with Grey's Anatomy. I remember when I was re-watching that recently because I watched it first at university and I watched like five seasons and I just didn't know that another one came out. So recently I found out there's like 18 seasons or something and I was like, yeah. oh, okay, I'm <laughs> buckling in. <laughs> so I like was re I still haven't finished them all actually. But um, the relationship between Dr. Dreamy, you know, and mm. what's her name? Meredith, Meredith. Grey. Mm. Yeah. is so like so hot cold so fractured so avoidant anxious like so mm. unhealthy and so toxic yet it's you know even in the media it's like revel reveled revolved as like this like thing to aspire for as like this level of like hotness and steam and like just sexual chemistry that they have that everyone kind of aspires to but actually if you look at what's happening on a day-to-day basis in fact any of the relationships on that show are so unhealthy and i was just mm. like damn this is great to watch but this is so bad <laughs> like in terms yeah. of like it's what they are portraying. yeah it's entertaining but my god it's unhealthy like imagine being trapped in that cycle of you know consistently breaking up and oh getting back together with a partner oh god i can't it gives me anxiety to think about <laughs> anyway <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing more about what you do because I think it's really helpful to just understand like your level of authority on this topic and to just really understand like your background. And I think why, you know, what what is very clear for you is when I talk to you about this topic, you do have a v- very clear level of integrated authority. You know your topic incredibly well. You have personal experience tied to it. So for me, it makes a lot of sense that, you know, you really have experienced this. We will say quant- quantum growth, like in inverted commas, because it's one of those things that in order for that kind of thing to happen, you do have to have a lot of knowledge and a lot of expertise. But I really want to talk about this kind of business, shall we call it glow up, where like mm-hmm. over the past seven or eight months, you really have experienced like a huge level of growth. 
but it wasn't always that way. And we were just talking before this about the importance of sharing where you were, you know, in your business, even before this shift happened. So could mm -hmm. we just go back now that we know what it is that you're coaching on? Talk to us a little bit about your business journey with making mm -hmm. this into a successful business. Yeah, I would love to. Um, so my business started, as I said, in 2020. And I started out as a life coach, a general life coach, um, helping women with their careers or when they're, if they're wanting to switch careers or start a business of their own. And this all happened in sort of COVID time. So we were all in lockdown. I was, you know, at home grinding away, trying to get my little business off the ground. And I started signing clients and, you know, it was going okay. And then I did that for about a year. And then I pivoted into business coaching, which looking back now was very premature. And I was also, I think quite, inf I was quite naive at the time. And I was sort of influenced by someone I was working with to go into that space. And I think this person maybe just saw potential in me and, and maybe knew that it would be profitable. So was in, I was encouraged to, to do it. And I, you know, it's like I knew nothing, but I definitely remember at the time feeling a heavy sense of imposter syndrome and um, not feeling embodied, as we say, and not having that integrated authority around what I was teaching on. And so I, so I was doing the business coaching for um, a few months on my own. And then I actually ended up getting into a business partnership with another coach who was in Canada. Uh, it was actually wild. We met online and um, we had both worked with the same business coach at different times. And long story short, we, we, we really connected and we decided to start a business together. So we, it was still in the business coaching space and it was helping people who wanted to develop, wanted to develop coaching skills um, as well as launch their first program. And so we ran that together for a, about nine or 10 months. And then you know, we were doing okay. We we're making some money, um, nothing huge. And then it was the beginning of 2022 when we were gearing up for a launch and we'd stopped selling for a few months because um, we were sort of trying to give value, give value, and then have this, you know, supposedly big launch. And I remember um, I... I wasn't, I didn't have another job at the time. So I was completely reliant on this money for my livelihood. And we did this launch and I had, I think like 20 sales calls and no one signed up. And I was extremely confused because I'd done plenty of sales calls in the past. I had no problem signing clients. And um, I went to my partner at the time and we, you know, basically realized that we were no longer on the same page and yeah, things weren't, I won't go too much into details, but we just, we didn't have the same shared vision anymore. And anyway, it wasn't working. And I think a big part of that comes down to, like I always say, the universe will always give you the lesson you need. It will kind of break you down in order to rebuild you in the, the way you're meant to be. And I think this is what happened because basically no money was coming in. And within a matter of weeks, my entire life just did the biggest 180. I So no money was coming in. So I had to move out of my apartment that I was living in in Bondi that I absolutely loved. I couldn't shop my business anymore. I got a job within the same week, I think, um, cleaning houses because it was the only job I could find that would start paying me the same week that I started working. And I moved out of my apartment and moved in with my grandma. And um it was one of the darkest periods of my life um, because I was so, my identity was so tied to my business and to this, you know, success that I wanted other people to see me. I wanted other people to see me as successful, as a s successful entrepreneur and, you know, working for myself. And when that was taken away, I felt like I had no worth at all. And, um, I basically had to surrender to this this dark period because I tried to start my business again on my own, like after my business partner and I stopped working together. But I realized I 
had absolutely nothing to give. Like my tank was so empty and it was really scary because I remember thinking, what if this passion never comes back and what am I going to do then? Um, but I had to really, it was a good exercise in trusting the process. And so I, um, I got a job as a receptionist. I took a break from coaching and I had to, I paid back a whole bunch of debt that I'd accrued from, you know, trying to start my business. And, um, I think it was the universe's way of just forcing me to take a step back because the way I was trying to coach and I guess what I was coaching on was not fully embodied. It was not the path I was meant to be on. And it took me a long, I was very stubborn at first. Um, but yeah, it took me a while to surrender to that. And then I also went through my relationship that I was speaking about earlier ended, um, at the very beginning of 2023. And that at the time felt like the last good thing I had in my life and um it was extremely painful so it was like every everything was shedded everything was taken away and I remember just saying to the universe to myself I said all right I completely surrender like I am not going to push I'm not going to try until I feel my passion come back naturally because I want to do this right if I'm going to do this again I want to do it from the right place And then I remember actually I was sitting at work one night. I was working um, at a dental practice as a receptionist and I was doing the late shift and I was sitting there. It was like 7.30 at night. And all of a sudden I just got this stroke of inspiration and I just felt this urge to want to share with my audience what had happened over the last year and where I'd been because I completely stopped showing up on Instagram. Mm. And I just, it just poured out of me and I started sharing about what had happened and then all of this like love and support came, you know, flooding in and it really just like opened the floodgates. And so I, you know, thankfully it came back and then it was just a few months after I started showing up again, that the, um, the idea to move into the relationship coaching space came through and, you know, looking back, like at the time, even though it was so hard to lose that relationship I'm so grateful for that experience because had I not had that relationship I wouldn't be again as embodied as I am today in being able to talk about you know the highs and the lows of secure relationships like it was definitely an important part of the journey and I remember I knew I had this this sort of resurgence of energy that I wanted to bring to the business, but at the same time, my mental, uh, my my mindset and my headspace was still pretty fragile um, from you know the blow to my confidence and ego, I guess that this eighteen month period or two year period had taken, and that was around the time that I came to you to want to work with you and. Um, And it's, you know, it's also interesting because I remember right at the time that that breakdown was happening, I was messaging you and I was actually looking back at through my DMs earlier to see when it was. And it was like March 2022 and I was reaching out to you. And I remember so clearly being in this very desperate energy, this very desperate state, almost like clinging, like wanting to sign up to work with you because I could see how amazing you were as a coach. And I was like, I just, if I can just do this course, if I can just make this happen, like everything will be okay. And of course I couldn't find the money. It wasn't the right time. And then two years later was when I came back to you and I said, I'm ready. And I found the money and invested in your mastermind. And it was the best decision I've ever made, honestly. Like, yeah, I mean, I can keep going, but (laughs) oh my gosh. I love the transparency and thank you so much for sharing all of this. And I want to dig into maybe some of the more specific things that you were experiencing, but I think it's really important to know because um, people will come onto your profile now and see like a larger audience and you launching all of these things and just think, oh my God, it's so easy for you. You've had it so easy. Mm. And this is like the curse of the successful entrepreneur really is like, as soon as you become successful, people think it's this overnight success, but more often than not, the most successful business owners in the world have had multiple failures. 
And that's a really important thing to remember. Like I set up two businesses like eight years ago, both of them failed and I went back to corporate. And it's only been this one that like has succeeded in a way and has just had a more consistent level of like income coming through. But I think it's really important to normalize that these things happen. And I think what's really incredible about your story is like this level of integration and embodiment that you have with your topic has come from a complete surrendering to what was happening to you. And it, it brings mm -hmm. forward like the tower card in tarot where it's like everything needed to kind of crumble down in order for you to be reborn. And when you talk about that lightning strike of inspiration that came through you'd like cleared away enough of the the ego in order for that inspiration mm -hmm. to kind of come through into land and i think that's a really important part to bear in mind when someone's building authority as well as like it's very ego to allow the ego to it's very important and easy to allow the ego to dictate where it is you go and i think that's previously what you did when you move into business i see this happen mm. so much where people are like it's going to be easier going here but the problem is if you're not embodied in what you're teaching, it's never going to be easier. And I think mm -hmm. what you've experienced is like, you know, you realize that you have that shift, the ego came down and you just followed the pulls, which brought you to where you are and to find the topic. So I'm kind of curious to hear a little bit more around some of like the mindset shifts that you experienced and what you were currently navigating for, like just before we started coaching, because initially um, you came into Feminine Authority Manifestation School Mastermind and then you upgraded into the house so that we mm -hmm. can work on some more strategic things as well. So we've kind of been doing like a little bit of a balance of inner work and outer work. But the first like work that we really did together was like laying the foundation for your nervous system to feel safe with success and with visibility. So could you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about like what you were tangibly experiencing from a mindset perspective that was kind of stopping you from showing up or going all in in your business and what the biggest shifts were for you to actually create this like quantum leap that did seem to happen hmm. such a good question if i think back to that time um i think because i had you know my initial experiences of business were not, I mean, when I was doing the life coaching, that sort of was embodied, but it was, I was still quite young and there was a large sense of imposter syndrome and, um, struggling to back myself and to back the fact that I know what I'm talking about. And, um, and then when I was extremely humbled by the universe, I just coming, coming back into business and, um, I knew I was I was wanting to step into that place of authority. I wanted to expand my audience, make more money, help more people. But I felt like, you know, the imposter syndrome felt like this huge mental wall in front of me. And I wanted, I needed your help to uncover like where that was, what that where that was really coming from. Like where was that insecurity and that imposter syndrome rooted? Because I had you know, the thing about the imposter syndrome is you can have so much evidence, so much external evidence to prove that you know what you're talking about, to prove that you've been on this journey, that you are embodied. Um, but the mental side of it can be a real head fuck, if I may. Yeah. Um, and so as you just pointed out, I think one of the biggest shifts was increasing the the safety that I could feel within my body, within my nervous system to be able to handle that um, increase in pressure, in responsibility, in handling change. And I think I was very scared of that. I was very scared of more responsibility with more clients because I think the underlying fear was like, what if they find out I'm an imposter? What if they find out I'm a fraud? Which I'm not, but that's what that voice in your head says. Um, and so we started doing some of the deep work on this and, you know, the processes that you, that you took me through, that you take people through in FAMS, like in the inner work is so amazing. And it's, I've done a lot of personal development work and a lot of, you know, inner healing, but these meditations, these processes were better than anything I'd ever experienced and allowed me to go to places within myself, within my psyche that I hadn't been able to probably access before. And I think the craziest thing, the thing that 
consistently blows my mind, even to this day, is like how closely linked, um, you know, childhood or even teenage year experiences are with, expo- uh, with you know, allowing yourself to be seen as an adult in so many different arenas, but especially in business. And, you know, if, now that I'm saying it, it makes sense because if it happens in relationships, of course, it's going to happen in other areas. But being able to really find yeah where that fear was coming from and work with that part of myself to heal and to uh, to feel safe within my body is what started to create these, you know, seemingly like this quantum jump on on the external because I think it was only like a month or two months into doing this work with you is when I sort of started to experience this quantum jump. So um, I guess the way I was showing up on my Instagram and the things I was talking about were even more embodied. They were even more unapologetic, more real, more raw, and they landed with people, the people I'm trying to talk to so strongly that my audience... um, grew huge I mean it was I was at about a thousand followers or like 1200 followers and then after this quantum jump um my audience is now at over 75,000 people and to be able to I think you really have to do this work to be able to hold um that I guess that number of yeah eyes and attention on you and to not crumble (laughs) because there was there was a phase like when that first started growing that I was freaking out a bit. I remember talking to you being like, oh my God, well, like, what do I do with all this? What do I do? And, you know, you were always, you're always so amazing at being so calm and so neutral and helping me to, I think what's important is helping me to normalize this has mm. been one of the the best things that I have learned is, you know, when you sign a client or when you gain followers or when you make that money, it's like keeping that sense of neutrality and calmness so that your body almost starts to take that as the new normal. Um mm-hmm. And really becoming like securely attached almost in my business is kind of what you helped me to do, I think. Yeah, I, it's, I've got goosebumps as you're talking through because, you know, the, the overlaps that I see between relationship coaching and business mindset coaching is actually like quite prevalent in that really atta- anxious or avoidant attachment types, they typically will come into our business as well. Mm. And, you know, thank you so much for sharing all of this because I think it's really... I've had the same experience with my business. It was only when I healed very deep parts inside my nervous system that I became more of a match for more success, more visibility, whatever that looked like. And this is probably, you know, the the strategic stuff is, is definitely important with this. You know, we can't discount that at all. And I will say like you are someone that picks up the marketing's feedback very, very quickly. And, um, that's something you know the marketing skill is a really big point of this but when you do both things and you feel safe to be visible to show up to you know as you were talking about like the pressure to um have more clients to be seen it's not actually the fear of like whether it's money or visibility that people are actually scared scared of it's what comes with those things it's always the thing that's below Mm -hmm. those things and you know i think it's always like mind-blowing to find like exactly what it is that's causing these things like I remember so many funny times like on client calls with you you know when we're doing this work and you'll come in with a problem and there's like a this moment of like you know when I you know when something was either reflected back or something where it's like genuine like shock like your eyes wide and you're like (laughs) just literally look like you know something had just and you're just like I've never found that connected that you know and it's just so you have that moment and something just unclicks and then that's where you go into and it's just so interesting how quickly everything can shift and you know I think we we just really don't want to discount the power of this work when it comes to these kind of quantum leaps because safety in the body is everything we literally dictate our results based on how we feel and so Mm. it doesn't matter that's why the inner and the outer authority is such necessary parts for this and I think you're such a prime example of just how you know, when you really align that inner authority with believing that you're an authority and feeling like you're not an imposter and that you can show up with confidence, it allows you to, you know, show up in that way and people feel it. That's the level of conviction. And I think you just have such good conviction in your post down. People can feel it. They want to follow that. 
So mm. I just want to like really you. acknowledge you for like all of the work that you've been doing because it, it's not easy work and it is painful sometimes and it's not comfortable to go into this stuff. Mm. But that's where you really find like the real growth of things. So talk to us a little bit about, um, so then you we came out of the fams while well, we were still doing the fams. Then you came into the house as well. What were some of the things that then shifted when you came into the house whilst you were doing both the mindset work and then the strategic work as well? When I came into the house, um, that was when I, I felt like I'd been through a good six months or nearly six months maybe of working with you on that inner authority of doing the deeper work. And, um, you know, the, the audience grew and I felt that I was at a time then when I wanted to really, I guess, like capitalize on that. I wanted to refine some of the more tangible external elements of my business and um, also just wanting to upskill to create the best, oh, the best possible experience I could for my clients. So um, when I came into the house, I knew that one of the first things I wanted to do was to refine even my coaching skills um which you know can be I knew the importance of that because the client experience is the, arguably the most important thing because if clients aren't having a good experience or getting good results then you're probably not going to get good referrals um good testimony testimonies um testimonies is that the word yeah we'll go with it. testimonials <laughs> Um, and so anyway, so I wanted to, you know, refine my coaching skills because I've always been in awe of the way that you coach and the way you're able to hold space for people. So I went through your art of coaching program, which was amazing again, in learning how to really create safety for your clients and to know how to navigate tricky conversations of when, you know, even being able to see when a client is going into that fight or flight response or that freeze response and how to help them through that uh, so that they can experience transformation on the other side. So that was something I really valued in coming into the house. And then on top of that, learning to upgrade um, my program so that, again, it was a better experience for my clients. And then the messaging, I think, in my marketing of actually one of the biggest shifts was learning the importance of speaking to high ticket clients. And I realized that up until that point, before learning that in the house, I was always speaking to clients through my content and messaging that were more of in a victim mindset, because that was how I was taught initially to do copywriting was like, you know, you really speak to people in their pain. And um, I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought I was making them feel seen and that's why they wanted to work with me. But the most important thing you taught me was needing to speak to people, needing to speak up to people and mm -hmm. to empower them. So it's like speaking to their pain to make sure they know that you understand what they're going through, but then lifting them up and also highlighting the things that they're already doing um, to, to really speak to the client who is proactive and not just passive and like waiting for someone to rescue them. And when I started to shift my messaging in that way, I definitely noticed uh, a shift in the types of clients I was I was calling in and attracting, you know, clients who would find a way to make it work financially because they knew it was a top priority for them. Clients who would show up to the calls, who were invested, who put in the work and who want to get the results. Um, so, yeah, they were definitely some of the more tangible shifts I experienced coming into the house. Incredible. Thank you so much for sharing because I think it's important to also know that, like, you can – make money and have success from like non-tangible ROIs and like the more that I do this work the more I actually find even more tangibility and non-tangible subjects than in things like business in reality <laughs> because there's just so many tangible things and like one of the things that you are everyone should go and have a look at um Mimi's uh, Instagram because she really does create very good content mm. and it's uh, it really has I have noticed like a big up level um, and you have certain things that you know now will go viral that, you know, you have certain recipes that are very you. And I think what's st starting to really happen is like you've built a very specific brand, even if you mm. don't realize it through like the way that you do your visuals for the the tonality with which you speak to your clients. And I think that's why, you know, you're you're finding yourself expanding in this way. So, 
you know, overcoming like all of that stuff. How does it feel now to be where you are in your business today? Because the other thing that you've done is you've moved to Bali, which is like a huge, yes. you know, <laughs> let's talk about that as well. Where are oh you now? God. 100%. So yeah, I'm coming to you live from Changu, Bali. <laughs> um, I moved, so I moved to Bali four months ago and that was, do you know, honestly, I think the work that you and I had done definitely attributed to to me being able to do that. So a bit of a wild story, but I was um, basically decided that I was going to move to Bali about six weeks before I actually did. And it happened, you know, a few things happened um, in my in, in my life back home where I just sort of was at this fork in the road in my personal life and like where I wanted to live and what I was doing. And one of my really good friends um, just suggested to me one day, she's like, why don't you just go and move overseas? Like what, you can take your business anywhere. Like just go and have an adventure, you know, nothing's tying you down. And previously, I don't think I'd ever thought of myself as someone who would go and live overseas but I think it was just the timing of when she said it and I kind of was stewing on it and then I was coming to Bali actually for a retreat I'd already booked a holiday to come here and so I'm like okay maybe I'll go to Bali because I'd never been here before and I will do the retreat see if I like it and I'll come home and you know if I want to move there I'll pack up my life and go and I was saying this to my friend and she's like why don't you just not come back like when you go to this retreat and I was like, you're crazy. Like, there's no way I can do that. Like, and she's like, why? I'm like, well, because, you know, I need to like pack up my life and sort out my things and sell my car and blah. And she just, I mean, she just sat back and she looked at me. She's like, yeah. Like, and, and I was so stumped. I was like, uh, I need to think about this. And then I left and I'm like driving home and I was like, shit, maybe she's right. You know, maybe I just make this decision and back myself and everything will just have to work out. We'll just have to fall into place. Mm. And I think the work we had been doing to create safety in my body, to know how to create safety and also to feel very connected to myself mm -hmm. had a big impact and a big part in me being able to do this because I knew that I had the tools to support myself through any discomfort, through any, um, I guess, emotional turmoil. I knew I could, I could help myself through it. And I think the confidence that I had developed um, through the work we were doing helped me to do this. So, you know, that paired with the fact that I now have a business I can take anywhere in the world. And so I made the decision. And then again, like it was crazy. Everything, just the way it all lined up and fell into place was as if the universe like wanted me to be here. And oh um, so that's what I did. And then, you know, even down to like, the details I was trying to sell my car because I wanted to use the money to come here and my dad he was like you're not gonna sell your car he's like I'm just telling you I've sold cars in my time it's not gonna happen in five weeks and I was like well I disagree I think it's gonna happen because I want it to happen because the universe and, wants it to yeah and then you know down to like the week before I left I had a, a lovely couple reach out to me who were interested they came and saw the car picked it up and paid the day before I left and oh I was like thank you mm. universe um yeah so yeah so anyway I made the move and I'm here um four months later and I love it it's been a very easy beautiful transition and as soon as I got here it felt right like I felt like this is where I wanted to be um mm. and so it's just you know continuing to as you were saying earlier I think one of the most important things with your growth and with business as well is really following the feelings, like trusting those feelings that to the outside, to other people, they might not logically make sense. Like people, some people said to me, why the hell are you moving to Bali when you've never been there? Like, that's crazy. But I think from that integrated authority, from that inner authority I had developed, I, it didn't even rock me because I was like, nah, like I trust myself. I know this feels right to me for whatever reason. So I'm mm -hmm. following that feeling. Um, yeah. mm. you have literally become a different person. And I think that's really the power of this work. And, you know, Joe Dispenza's, Dr. Joe Dispenza's book is called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And like, I just really think that we cannot discount the power of how quickly we can actually become a different person. Like the people that knew me in mm. London, you know, 
seven years ago literally say that I am a different person because I am like I mm. literally changed at a cellular level and it feels like you have as well mm. like you can actually take action towards things that you really want to do so much easier and the results that you see in your tangible world whether it's huge social media growth like you saw you know your highest cash months that you've ever experienced like that mm. happens because of the work that you do on your identity and you know when you pair it with like aligned action like you know doing your content showing up consistently because you have been taking a lot of that aligned action too moving to bali that's the aligned action but doing the inner work allows for you to take that aligned action so <laughs> yeah thank you so much for sharing all of this because i think yeah it's just so powerful to hear your specific story around this because i think so many people will be able to relate to where you were previously and be able to really aspire to where you are today so thank you so much for sharing and um if there was one thing that, you know, you had to overcome when thinking about joining, you know, the house or FAMS mastermind and any fears that you've had, like before joining, what were some of those things? And if someone was experiencing those same fears, what would you say to them? Yeah, um, good question. The biggest fear that I think I had was probably, you know, like, what if it doesn't work for me? Like, what if I can't do it? What if I, you know, I pay this money, I make this investment, I have the tools, but I still can't make it work. Um, and I, I think, you know, that was probably looking back a sign that I needed it more than I even realized. Like, because if you're having that, that lack of, it's a lack of self-trust, like mm. thinking that you can trust yourself to do the work and to get the results. And so that was probably my biggest fear. Um, and I mean, having, you know, what was so great about talking to you about this was, again, you held such a neutral space for me to ask like probably a million questions and um, kind of, you know, we went back and forth a few times until I felt like really ready to make that jump. And it, yeah, like I said, it was the best thing I did because the work that you helped me through was what strengthened that self-trust and once you develop that skill it's like anything is possible because you develop this mental resilience and develop this capacity to it's like yes even though something feels hard even though you feel the discomfort it doesn't automatically mean that you're going to fail it doesn't automatically mean that this is the wrong thing to be doing it's mm -hmm. all part of the process and um i would say if anyone's feeling that uncertainty like but if, if the if the underlying feeling is the desire to do this work and you feel like it's right for you but then that's layered with fear don't let the fear dictate your decision like trust that feeling underneath because it will never lead you astray and it definitely didn't for me yeah I love that thank you so much for sharing and really? you know investing is always scary at any single level like I still experience it like it's still always like a a real inner journey um and one that, you know, as business owners, we all, our businesses are built on investing, you know, on that's how any wealth is generated in the world. So I love that you've shared all of that. And anyway, Mimi, it has been amazing to chat to you. Thank you so much for showing up and being so vulnerable and sharing so much. Like, it is just amazing to see how far you've come and the growth and the power that you have really created in your brand and in yourself and the moves that you're making. And I know that it's only going to continue to grow. So where can everyone find you on Instagram? Um, give us all your handles. What are you currently working on? Do you have any programs? If someone has an anxious or avoidant attachment type, they want to go to secure that they could work with you. Give us all the information. Yes. Um, thank you so much for everything you said, first and foremost, and for having me here today. And I just, before I get into that, I quickly want to share, um, I was looking back through our messages and I sent, I sent you a DM, I think it was in 2022, so like two years ago, when I remember going on my walks, um, you know, soul searching in that dark period. And I would listen to your podcasts because they gave me so much comfort and um, hope for the success I wanted to have in the future. And so it's a very beautiful full circle moment to be here with you on your podcast, talking about the growth and success I've had, um, you know, here two years later. So I really hope that anyone who's listening, who's going through it right now, or who's finding it hard and you're not sure when it's going to be your turn. And like, just, I hope this gives you comfort to know that 
you can literally go through the biggest breakdown and bounce back from it. Um, and it's all possible as long as you just keep going and keep getting the support you need. So I just want to share yeah. that. Um, oh, I love that. Yeah. Um, but yes, you can find me on Instagram. My handle is at Mimi Watt. Uh, and I am working on, I'm actually launching my signature group coaching program in September, which is Peacefully Attached. It's my signature Ooh. program and it is for people who are wanting to ditch their anxiety riddled dating patterns so that they can become secure within themselves and attract healthy love. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, jump over to my Instagram and send me a message. Amazing. Thank you so much, Mimi. You are incredible. And if anyone wants to have that secure attachment type I cannot recommend Mimi enough like the work that you do is so 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 powerful it honestly has changed my life and I know that you are going to be destined to transform so many other people's lives so I'm so excited to continue witnessing you saw if you are listening please make sure to go and follow Mimi on Instagram send her a message let us know like what you got from this episode if it resonates Mm -hmm. with you it means the absolute world if you're Mm -hmm. watching this on YouTube please make sure that you give this a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button If you are listening to the podcast, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button as well or the follow podcast and leave us a rating, a review. If you did like this, feel free to tag us on Instagram at Hayley June Lloyd and yours is at Mimi Watts, is it? Uh, Mimi Watt, yeah. Mimi Watt. And um, let us know what you took away from this. It would mean the Mm. absolute world to us. So we are sending you so much love. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Any parting words that you want to give Mimi? Oh, uh, just... I don't know, if all else fails, come to Bali and have a coconut with me on the beach. <laughs> I'm I'm coming. <laughs> no, thank you so I much for having it. me. It was such a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.